was dance something that you were super familiar with as an art form? Uh, as a fan, I am a terrible dancer and they will never get me on camera. Hi, Hi William, <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, pleasure is all mine. And congratulations on the film, it's, it's so good. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm so excited to get to share it. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, like, I think we've come to expect just excellence from these short films. Like, they, they're always kind of like, I, I wouldn't say necessarily always the, the highlight of going to go see these movies, but you sure. know you're going to get excellence. Sure. And I'm sure that, like, you end up kind of taking that for granted as an audience member. And I'm sure that puts, like, a crazy amount of pressure on, on you guys to <laughs> execute and, like, live up to that standard. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, everything out of these is so good. Absolutely. So, What's it like living with that kind of pressure? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Great observation. Uh, it, it is a, a tremendous amount of pressure. Um, I don't mean that in a bad way, though. It's um, I think it's it's outweighed by how much of an honor it is to get to do it. You know, but I've I've been at the studio for 11 and a half years now. And so I've been there for you know, met many of the short films, you know, and I was, you know, sitting in the room with Patrick Osborne when he was making Feast. And so I know the amount of work that it goes in, that goes into making it and how, how difficult it is um, and how incredible, you know, some of those films turned out, all of those films turned out. Um, but you also know that you have this support of an entire studio that knows what they're doing with creative leadership that has your back and is going to give you all the notes uh, you can possibly handle um, to, to make it better. And so while there's a lot of pressure to, um, to not mess it up, uh, you also have the confidence that there's gonna be, there's gonna be a, the support you need when you need it to, to get it to where you need it to go. Absolutely. And where did the journey for this specific idea begin for you? Um, you know, I came a bit before I got the opportunity to direct this. I had been thinking about this idea for, for a year or two, um, just starting to get a little bit older, starting to feel my body change, starting to see, you know, the, the grays starting to come in, um, my knees starting to go, can't, you know, I play basketball a lot and, you know, that was starting to go pretty quickly, heartburn, every, you know, all, all the things, you know. Uh, drink a beer and fall asleep. You know, it's like that kind of change in my life just started making me um, long for a time that I kind of felt that I had lost um, this young, this young version of myself that I kind of felt that I had lost. And I felt like that was an interesting concept. And I started talking to my family about it. And, you know, when I talked to my mom and she would always talk about all these things that she was going to do and she grew up and um, I started thinking about my grandparents and their different perspectives on, on aging and how they approached aging. And I realized that I had this dichotomy between my two different sets of grandparents where one, when they retired, they, they sold their house, they bought an RV, um, they traveled the United States, they went to every national park in the United States, and they, they tried to check off all, all the bucket list items, you know? And my other grandparents were more sedentary. They stayed home. They kind of watched life happen. Um, they were very happy. They were amazing. I was very, very close with, with all of them. Um, but I thought it was interesting, those two different views on what old age meant. And I thought it'd be really interesting to try to pack all of those emotions and all of those thoughts into, into a couple um, and see how, how this story could change their, their perspectives. No, absolutely. And I mean, before we get into the developing of that idea, yeah, I think one of the things that people wonder about when they look at, you know, how Disney works, um, how Pixar works is, you know, you have all these amazing creative minds all in one place. And there's always, you know, you, you hear rumors like, oh, do people have to wait their turn? How do they, how do they even get an idea made when you're surrounded by all of these people? How do you right. raise your hand and say, okay, I have, I have an idea. <laughs> I think this will work for a short. I think we should all, everyone work together on this one idea that I just had. Like, <laughs> Process well, I think, you know, you, you're absolutely right. There's, there's a ton of incredibly brilliant people who are, who are all deserving of, of the opportunity that, that I had. Um, I was, I was fortunate. I, I don't, I don't quite know how I was selected or why I was selected, but um, Jen and Clark, um, they, they came to me and said, you know, we're, we're bringing back the, the theatrical shorts program and we'd like, we'd like for you to be one of the first. And um, 
and they wanted it to feel as much like our feature development process as possible because they really wanted to treat it as as kind of a training ground for for people like me who haven't who haven't been through the entire process. I made puddles, but it was uh, and it's, it's a slightly different development process. And so they wanted it to feel more like our feature development process. And uh, and so we had to do the whole thing. We had to do a multi pitch, which is how our feature directors they pitch more than one idea where they have to develop. Um, develop them to, to a certain point where they can pitch the idea, they get notes on those ideas, um, and they keep cycling. Um, and us again was was selected of the I pitched four ideas, I believe, and us again was selected. And then, you know, we kept beating it up and kept beating it up. And then eventually we started storyboarding and kept beating it up. And um, and so, yeah, I don't I don't know why they picked me, um, but uh, but I'm awfully lucky that they did. Is it a natural progression to go from animator to director? I mean, obviously in the hierarchy, of course it is, but in terms of this creative process, like, is it just a very, just like, oh, you're there, or is there a big step and a big you know, change? In, I, think, in the creative process? I think it depends on the person, personally. Um, I think, you know, directors, I think that the short circuit program at Disney has really shown that directors can come from, from anywhere. You know, it's, it's about the, the emotional attachment from the director to the story that they want to tell and the vision that they have. Um, I think as, as an animator and as, especially as a head of animation, I've, I've sat in this place, you sit kind of in the middle of the production um, where there's still a lot of production that happens after you, you have to ingest, you know, story, story and layout and editorial and all these things and try to like, to try to make it work for, for the downstream departments. Um, but when I say it's about the specific person, I think it's about where, how you see that process, how you see your stories and having that ambition to, to tell your own stories, to put your own perspective out there um, and to have a vision for, for the, entire, the entirety of a film, not just a, a singular piece of it. And so I guess I believe that a director can come from anywhere if they have those emotions and those, that drive and that, and that vision. Um, and that story that they want to tell. And did you find that it's easier for you or harder for you? Or basically exactly what you're about? For you oh, it was, oh, it was so much harder. Um, you know, I think, I think anytime anyone does a job for the first time, they, well, maybe not anytime, but I think we often assume that other people's jobs are, are, are simpler because of just our, 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 our vantage point. Um, but it was so it was so much harder, and in a, in a in a great and and educational way, um, you know, dealing it, it gave me so much respect for for what directors go through, what writers go through, um, in in every studio, especially ours, and you know, dealing with with all the notes and all of the perspectives, and trying to make sure um, you are clear about your vision and where you want things to go, while also being inclusive and recognizing that you might not always have the best idea, that uh, the best idea might come from outside. And so making sure that you are open and flexible, but also clear about where you would like things to go. And I think trying to find that balance is, is a huge challenge, especially for, um, for a first time director. Technically it's my second time, but I think at this scale, when you start getting this many people and this many eyes on it, uh, it definitely uh, becomes a little bit more challenging. No, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I can't imagine just, you know, the work that goes into making this, you know, sing the way that it does. Yeah. Or dance the way it's that it does. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, in terms, of, in terms of executing that, in terms of the storytelling, what was the most difficult part in making this work? Because obviously, yeah, you're inspired by, your, your grandparents are inspired by this, you know, just basic yearning to be something that you were, or maybe, you know, accept the person that you've become. Yeah. But is that about like, did you sit there and did you plan out these people's entire lives? Did you know exactly who they are? And then you have to work on this very visual um, way to represent them and with zero words at all? Or is it really just about starting simple and then letting it grow organically? Uh, you know, I, I would say it's both. I feel like we kind of, you know, you're almost talking about a spectrum. I feel like we kind of picked at it from both ends. You know, I think, um, we did spend a lot of time talking about not that it was ever really going to show up in the film, but just talking about who would these characters have been, um, where would they have met? You know, I always imagine they, they lived in this city for a long time. They've been in this apartment for forever. You know, that art is this type of character who doesn't, who doesn't deal with change well, which is me. Um, and so he hasn't allowed for a lot of change to happen in his life. Um, 
and and he's in need of this change. But at the same time, you start at the beginning, you start at the simple of like, what is art's problem? What does he need to overcome? What is his perspective? And how does this, how does the plot of this story affect him and his relationship emotionally? So you kind of pick it both and let one inform the other. Um, but I do think we, we tried to understand these characters, both characters as, as deeply as we could. Hmm. Was dance something that you were super familiar with as an art form? Uh, as a fan, I am a terrible dancer and they will never get me on camera. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I started watching, um, I'm going to date myself a little bit, but I started watching So You Think You Can Dance the first season when it came out. I was, uh, I think I was like a freshman in college. I was home for the summer um, and it came on and I watched it with my mom. My mom was, is a huge part of my life and she would always take me to, to theater and things like local theater. We'd go to Chicago and go to plays and things like that. And so um, theater and dance had always been something I had, uh, I had always loved to watch. I think for, for people like me, it's almost a heightened level of emotion to, to even acting. There's, there's this extra level for me that I feel. And, um, and we started watching So You Think You Can Dance and I was just stunned by the storytelling, not just the athleticism, but the storytelling and the emotion in those pieces. And, um, you know, I'd go off to college and I'd come back or I'd be wherever and my mom, even when I moved out to LA, cause it's been on for whatever, like 17 seasons or something. Um, and she would record all of her favorite dances. And it was this thing that we, that we shared whenever I came home for Christmas or whatever, we would, we'd sit there and we would watch all these and kind of marvel at the storytelling and talk about it and talk about the feelings. And, uh, and so I think from, from the beginning, I knew that I wanted that piece in there. It felt like it fit thematically into the, into the type of story that I wanted to tell and that it worked as a, as an exaggeration component, you know, to make the world feel bigger, to make the world feel younger, to make the world feel harder for art to feel a part of. But at the same time, I, I thought it could help to enhance the emotion of the storytelling as well. I mean, how was it captured purely just in, you know, studying the, the you know, the Madrids themselves and just animating from that? Was this all mocap or how was it? No, it was it was using them as reference for sure. Um, you know, we we did a lot of iterations with them where we would send them storyboards. They would send us videos um, kind of uh not going full speed or not going full hardness, but just like here are the moves we're going to do. Um, and then they'd send that to me. I'd give them notes and go back and forth. And then we did, we did a reference shoot um, and we would use, we really used the videos pretty intimately. We, we, you know, we shot them so that we could basically cut the entire film together um, with, with their reference and then let the animators really dissect that reference as, as much as humanly possible. Well, I'm mean, over the reference points. I mean, because obviously, since you have characters that are from a specific era where you're trying to capture a specific era of dance in order to, to ground them in a reality, or was it really just about freeing it from that? Kind of, well, kind of. I think one of the reasons why I chose Keone and Mari is they have this amazing ability to, to kind of marry styles of dance in their style of dance. It has very much a hip hop feel that is very much modern. Um, but they also incorporate elements of contemporary dance and things like that that makes it feel sort of timeless. And so we really just wanted it to feel like them and their specific style of dance for the world and for art and dot, just to kind of um, to kind of let them have that freedom to to bring the characters to life. I would just kind of tell them, here's what the characters are saying to one another. Here are the shots that I think are gonna are going to happen. And here's the music, and then they they would kind of come up with the rest. Yeah, absolutely. And we're I know we're, I think we're running out of time, so oh, I just sure. wanted to, to ask you about you know your next steps. I mean, obviously in the, the land of NDAs, et cetera. I know there's not much. <laughs> Are you do you have a feature on the horizon? Do you have ideas, or is that something already in the works? I mean, I I definitely have lots of ideas. I look forward to making lots of lots more stuff. You know, I can't, I can't speak specifically about anything. Um, you know, I, one of the cool things about Disney is, you know, especially for people like me who are coming from animation and doing a short like this is um, I have the opportunity to, to animate. I anim I've been animating on Ryan the last, I animated on Ryan the last dragon. Um, I've been animating on some Disney plus content. Um, and I all, there's also, you know, future projects that I look forward to, to making ideas that I have emotions that I'd like to dig deeper into ideas. I'd like to dig deeper into, 
Um, so I just look forward to making more cool stuff. Excellent. Well, yeah. Congratulations on the film. Congratulations on becoming a father this year. I think. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. So, thank you so much. I can't yeah. wait. Have a great year. Take All care. right. Thank you. You too. It's great meeting you. You too. Bye. Bye.